We thank you, Pastor Haskin, and good evening, everyone. It is so good to be here. We came down from Cleveland, Ohio, by way of uh, Detroit, Michigan, and we came to be a blessing to this city. All right. We did not come to just have church as usual. Mm -hmm. We want to be a blessing. We want to leave a mark on this city. Well. We don't want to leave this city the same way we came in. All right. All right. And I have a word that is burning in me, and I can be real short with this word because my word for the body of Christ is obedience to God. Yeah. All right. Obedience to God. First of all, we all need to be saved. Mm -hmm. Without salvation, you can't, you're not even in the position to receive God's blessings. Well. But when you become a child of God, I, I say it this way, the sky is the limit. Mm -hmm. God says, ask and it shall be given. Yeah. Seek and you shall find, yeah. knock and the door shall be open. Uh -huh. So if anything we want to do or be, we can do in, in the Lord. Yeah. So, if you be willing and obedient, mm -hmm. he says you shall eat the good of the land. Yes, right. But, he said, but, if you refuse and rebel, you shall, you shall be devoured with the sword. All right. Now, I asked the Lord, and, I, and I, 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 I know I've said this more than once. When, when it comes to that phrase, I ask the Lord, what do you mean when you say you shall be devoured with the sword? And the Lord said to me, the same word that will bless you when you obey it will curse you when you disobey it. All right, all right. I you, if you go to the Bible, you can find it just that way. All throughout the Old Testament, when God was dealing with Israel, when they obeyed God, they lived a good life. Oh, yes, and when they when 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 they disobeyed, He allowed them to go on for so so many years. Right. But then He would send a, a wicked king right. in to take to take possession of them. They would send them in, in into slavery, yeah. you know, and they'd have to pay that penalty. Yeah. They would start crying all over again, yeah. mm -hmm. and God would hear their cry yes. for so many years. He'd send a deliverer. Yes. Yeah. And they, they be delivered. So I say to you, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. All right. You see, because that's God's word. And God wants his children to be blessed. Amen. I mean, God is, is reaching out to us all the time, trying to find ways to bless us. Mm -hmm. But because he gave us a will, yeah. oftentimes we choose death rather than life. Yeah. Well, all right, preach, preacher. And, and, and God is trying to get his blessings over to us. But if we need to understand that God has given us a, a way by which to receive his blessings. And if we come his way, we will be blessed. But if we go our own way, oftentimes we fail. We stumble and fall. And, and it, it's all right. Sometimes if you if you are making an effort to get to God and you're stumbling and falling, but when you're out there on your own, yes, and mm. the blessings are all around you, but because you got your own way of doing things. You got your own way of doing things. And and you know, one other thing I want to say to you in closing about prayer. Prayer is essential to get God's attention. I'm reminded now as I stand here and speak of 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Mm -hmm. And we know that the word of God does not lie. That's right. It is the truth. Mm -hmm. And it does not fail. Mm -hmm. God's word will do what it says if we will get in line yes. with his word. Yeah. Okay, if we will be willing and obedient, if we will pray, if we will love one another yes. as God requires us to love one another. Yes. He said, now, 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 prayer is the 
the, the, the key, mm -hmm. if you will, that unlocks the door. Right and somebody says faith will, will, will bring in the blessings, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm looking at now in the spirit of 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And I pray that, is there anyone here unsaved? Is there anyone in this congregation unsaved? Okay, so what I'm about to say is to all of us. Because God said, if my people, I'm talking about prayer. He said, if my people, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, which are called by my name, when we are born again, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and accept the gift that he prepared for us on the cross of, 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 of Calvary, mm -hmm. we become born again. Born again means you're God's child. Okay? He said, if my people, and we are his people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Yes, sir and seek my face. Yes. You see, oftentimes we think just because we are saved, that's enough. That's Amen. not enough. Amen. It's not enough. Paul said to work out your soul salvation. Yeah. Yes. You see, and we have a work to do. And that work that we have to do is to resisting of the temptations yeah. that the enemy will throw at us yeah. after yeah. we become born again. Yeah. So he said, if my people which are called by my name mm -hmm. shall humble themselves and pray mm -hmm. and seek my face mm -hmm. and turn. See, that puts the responsibility on us mm -hmm. and turn from that wicked way. Well. He said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their yes. sins yes. and I will heal their land. Yes. So God is always trying to bless his children. But we, because he has given us uh, the will to choose for ourselves, oftentimes we choose the opposite of what God has planned for us. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we miss God's best. Yeah. All right. You know, I was born and raised right here in Arkansas. Until I was 16 years old, my family migrated to California. I lived in California practically all my life. And God called me to preach. And I was faithful to God, Pastor. I was faithful to God. I wanted to be full time in the ministry. And I prayed and asked God to give me a four hour a day job. And he gave it to me just like the best job I ever had in my life. Okay? And, and, and. <laughs> After working on that job for so many years, I wanted to be full-time minister. So through uh, a series of circumstances that I won't go into, God began to close doors in California. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, he said to me, relocate to Cleveland, Ohio. Now, when I told my family this, they thought I was crazy because I lived in California practically all my life, and now you want to move and relocate to cold, snowy Cleveland, Ohio? But you know, I'm of the mind that wherever God tell you to go, mm -hmm. whatever God tell you to do, that's where God has prepared your blessing. Oh. And let me tell you, I'm a living witness that I have not, I've been there for 15 years, and I haven't regretted one day of being in Cleveland, Ohio. Wow. This past winter was the hardest winter that we ever had since I've been there. Mm -hmm. But still, Cleveland, Ohio is my home. And I say the only way I can leave Cleveland, Ohio is through and by direction of God. Okay. So that's obedience. And that's the, that's the spirit that we all need to have if we want to receive God's best for our lives. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah.